so that I don't forget later and realize that I hadn't recorded it. <laughs> I'm always uh, important. Always have those issues. So I think I missed one or two where the session was over, and that's when I realized I hadn't recorded it. And it's like, really? Let's do it again. Uh, you know, right. Can you remember everything that we went through? <laughs> How are you doing? Very good. Decided to shave or what? Yeah. I'd actually gone two months. And I usually... I, I figured it makes, makes you look 10 years younger that way, huh? Uh, I, don't, I don't like my jowls. So uh, I, I haven't... I haven't cut it this close in a long time. I usually use an a, attachment and do it on the first of the month. I usually uh, go way too long to the point where it hurts when I go to shave it. So nowadays I uh, use my trimmer to trim it down before I try to shave it off. Right. Now you at least have hair. Mine was all blank over here. I don't know. It's uh, getting... I. I yeah. Uh, I said, so, what's going on? What's going on? You know, it's funny. This is more work than when I had hair. Ah. But then growing hair again just doesn't sound like the thing for me to do. So what the hell? Um, have you spoken to anyone who went to uh, Printing United yet? Um, Ray Greenwood's the only one. And he went for just one day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure he was inundated with DTF. Well, he was actually pitching. He and Wendy Stenfelder are trying to drag Donald across the finishing line. Um, they couldn't get him to come to SGIA uh, to, to Printing United this year. Um, whereas last year, he was very well received. They dragged him to the uh, Impressions Expo in in uh, January. Yeah. And he, he's, he's always been a handful, you know, 40 years ago when I worked with him, you know, but yeah. uh, he was younger then and he sent me everywhere to be him in the field. Right. So I was always eager to do that, but we were all 40 years younger 40 years ago. Yes, we were. I but, can open I can almost remember those days, but not quite. He's got nobody in the field anymore. So Who, James Don? never leaves the building or else yeah, he I takes know. holidays. So as a Johnny on the spot guy, I don't see James as a a good uh, warden for if when Don wins the lottery and doesn't have to work anymore, so to speak. I know that it was probably 20 years ago that I pitched Rich Hoffman. In, you know, shouldn't we try and get something together? It's something I, I always worked with, you know, because he could he could make them easy. And when yeah. I said, Donald, let me go to Europe. You'll send me the tubes and I can build them. We'll find a friend in Amsterdam or in uh, in Denmark, a club shop, for instance, somebody with uh, with boat docks. You'll send the tubes. I'll set up a shop in the size of a garage. We'll be Newman in Europe. No, uh, I wanted to go to Europe and have a job. So, <laughs> oh, I was going to Amsterdam or Denmark. I think over the years he made his share of mistakes. I think the biggest one was going after Alan Hamu. I don't know what that cost him, but it cost him dearly. And in the end, nobody knew what the end result was, other than uh, they were both there. Right. You know, it's one thing to protect your. Uh, patent and I understand that but at the same time there comes that point where it's like is it really worth it and and can you get enough out of it and uh, to me clearly the answer was mm -hmm. at a certain point you cut your losses he had a nice bank account going at that time and he depleted the hell out of it because that went on for I don't know how many years but uh, Way too many, and, and yeah. I don't think I don't think it did his reputation any good anyway, because quite honestly, um, I don't think Alan was selling that much 
to justify spending millions to go after somebody. And it was inferior. You just had to point out what was wrong with it. Yep. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at Sherlock, who um, I still work with quite a bit, and they have a couple of, quote unquote, people who are knocking them off. And the question that, you know, they had to deal with is, do they go after them? And the answer was, how much can they benefit from it? You know, and how much is it really going to cost them? And what are they losing out on? And so they've decided no. And when Don did go after them, Jim being as inventive as he is, kept changing his stretcher and find one that wasn't infringing. But that's because they were more, they're certainly on the ethical side. Right. Um, and what's interesting is that Don has his panels made by them. Because I think he also came to the realization that the long stretching method was just counterproductive when you can buy a panel. I mean, let's face it, uh, you and I used to go out and have to train people for two to three days on how to stretch a screen. That's absurd when you can just buy a panel, click, click, and crank, and you're done. And if you do have a pneumatic stretcher, you hit the button and boom, it's finished. And so it took him forever to finally come to the realization that that would make a lot more sense. But in any event, you know, sitting on the sidelines and watching what goes on, it's always easy to be the coach mm. who doesn't have to really put his own players out there. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just think that over the years, Don could have done things that were a little smarter. I mean, he's a bright guy and all. I think not going and pursuing Europe the way he, you're mentioning, I think that was a huge mistake. I think the fact that he was not even sourcing out of the country made no sense. There, there are so many other places that you can go to that do a great job of extruding, that do a great job of casting, and for a fraction of the price. And it's very nice to be made in America. I'm all for it. Well, Up none of the stuff point, is made in America. The bolts, even in my day, 40 years ago, the bolts were always coming from Asia. Yeah. I mean, you know, knock it if you want, but, and oh, you're afraid the Asians are gonna knock you off. Excuse me, how tough do you think it is for them to buy a frame? I mean, come on, really? <laughs> oh, and can you go after them? Uh, that would be a, a huge waste of money. You know, um, and the I, idea I think... was more important to me than the engineering, because if you sold it, people would try the crappy stuff. If they want the crappy stuff, that's going to be fine. You know, he always had premium gear. You know, you can't stop the Asian market from knocking you off. Good luck. I don't care. I don't give a damn who it is, but intellectual property being stolen in Asia, what a shock. You know, I mean, really, like I have my book online and someone said to me, uh, my, the guy who put it out, he said, do I need to make it so that they can't make copies of it? I said, you know what? They're going to make copies anyway. I don't see the point in spending the extra money to try and cover it. I said, I wrote the book. I'm not going to make any... Uh, anything worthwhile out of it anyway. Oh, so some people are going to knock it off. Da -da. Knock it off. I don't care. You know, I mean, when all is said and done, it, it, the bottom line isn't going to change dramatically for me. It's, it's not one of those types of things. And so, no, to pay the extra money to put in all kinds of security and stuff, bullshit. Go for it, man. Somebody wants it that badly, they'll figure out a way. You know, and even with some of the Asian market that I deal with, like Indonesia and stuff, 55 bucks to them is a massive amount of money. Right. And so if one guy buys it and 10 of them share it, I'm happy for them. I really am. You know, um, the fact that even one of them bought it would be a, a, a positive note. And so um, anyway, I don't know. But in any event, I, I was at Printing United for the three days just gone one o'clock huh it's just gone one o'clock well and here we are <laughs> and, uh, um 
I, I don't know if anyone broadcast, will show up. Have you been broadcasting the whole time? We have been. We're, oh, we've okay. Been, okay. We've been taping, so we're we're good. Not, okay. Um, anybody shows up, great. If not, you and I will chat for a while. That's okay. So I flew in early, and uh, this show had to be the worst layout I've ever seen. You, oh, that's even with a map, trying to find a booth was impossible. I mean, literally impossible. Um, the, the area that we occupied was the South Hall, which had an upper and lower level, which, which is normal. Um, so I looked for booth 9401. And so it's 90, 91, 92, 93. Where the hell is 94? And you're looking and you find that eventually it's 94, 01, 02, 03, and 04. That's it. What about all the other numbers? And so, now that, that they just kind of, when you, oh, no. you know, normally you look at, at the aisles and it's mm -hmm. the 1100, 1200. Nope, none of that. And oh. um, I mean, so I downloaded their app and I could see where I needed to be, but you had to find the big booth nearby. So that when you got to the big booth, you knew you had to make a left turn and go down two aisles and make a right to get to the booth you needed because otherwise you weren't going to find it. No, no numbered streets. No, no, no. Nobody um, said that. They, <laughs> they did have one good thing. They did have a road going from Broadway. one side to the other, you know, with a yellow line and all. And they did have golf carts that would take you back and forth. So that was, well, I mean, my legs are at the point where they're shot anyway. And so uh, the day before the show, I was walking. And it was like, son of a bitch, man, if I have to do this for three days, they're going to carry me out on a stretcher, man. Um, just because my knees are gone. Actually, uh, I'm going to be doing the show in Fort Worth. Uh, that ends on Saturday. And that Wednesday, I go in for my knee replacement, hopefully. One or two. And I just one at a time. I need them both. And um, the idea of both at once, it, I just, I mean, they would be laying me up for way too long. So I'll, I'll deal with the pain for one and then do it again on the other whenever the first one is recovered enough. But, um, man, going up and down, oof. fortunately, uh, the uh, golf carts would actually swing around and get you from one level to the other level. So that was pretty okay. cool. The uh, apparel zone was laid out really nice. It was individual rooms. And each company had their own area, as opposed to the first time that I worked it, where it was just crap all over the place. And you, you didn't know what the hell was coming off. So stalls had theirs and uh, the apparelists had theirs. Uh, the academy had the room that we needed. Tell you what, man, in the academy. Uh, so we, we all got, if we registered early, we got a $20 coupon for a food truck. For Rick for Rick Roth's event. No, that wasn't Rick Roth's. I don't think. He did oh. an event that night <clears throat> at one of the clubs or something. No, this was from the Academy. And maybe Rick Roth has something to do with that. I'm not sure. but Okay, that, that's not what we discussed in the meetings. Yeah, the I mean, that, so. you know, we had the induction of the three new people. Uh, one of which was there. The other two were not. Um, and then there were food trucks. You got a drink ticket and a $20 coupon, so to speak. I mean, and uh, were there great choices? Yeah, but it was better than last year. Last year, I paid 50 bucks to have a cocktail. So, uh, oh. oh, yeah, last year, you wanted to go to the meeting, it was 50 bucks. And so it's like, really, this year they picked up $20. Well, I guess that's an improvement based on last year. So yeah, we are us having to pay. I know that that uh, if you brought a, a spouse or something. Last I, year, it was oh, an, 
I think somebody paid for me. I think Alan Howe. I, th I think you're right. Cab. But if you brought a spouse, it was an additional $150 last year. Right. And it's like, there was no food. I mean, right, really, there was, there was, well, you were there last year. Buffet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and did you, I mean, I looked at the buffet. It's like, really? I could have gone to uh, Golden Corral and had a better choice. For $30. Or whatever, yes. Um, I don't know. There's something about being in the academy that used to really be wonderful, and it still is being in the academy. But as far as being taken care of by Trinity United or any of that, no. That, that's a dead issue. So, I don't know. It's it's why I didn't go this year. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um What's his name? Won the uh, Stormstead, Swarmstead Award. Ray. Ray, right. Yeah. He was in the, out where the food trucks were because he couldn't figure out where the academy was meeting. So he won, you know, in his category and he won the Swarmstead and wasn't there for either one. And uh, Marshall had the uh, Parmesan Award. He was with right. Ray. And um, what's his name from Canada won the Parmesan Award? Right, Andy McDougall. Yeah, Andy won it. I mean, it, it was just, I don't know. It was very disjointed, shall we say. So. Well, I've been on a rant. For, but, for a you professional know, organization, we look like chumps. I've, I've been on a rant since they took the technical guidebooks and all the technical literature off the website. Yeah. How absurd. You know, that that was years and years and years of hard work. I mean, I know I put in some articles and stuff. I'm sure you did over the years. Um, yes, I know some of the information is definitely old. Great. It's called history. So it's screen printing. I mean, it's history. So, yes, uh, using film and an exacto knife to cut your stencil. Okay. Right. I understand. But it's still part of the history of this industry. And so why would you eliminate it? Why would you go and blank it off completely? I don't understand that. I mean, I, you know, I have my collection. You have you have a far more extensive collection. Um, so call me if you want literature, people paying attention. Um, you know, I mean, I, I have tons of shirts. I have tons of, I mean, I still have, I have the original brochure from the first impression show. Ah, good. I just lent it to someone from stalls because they're doing a, a thing on it. But, um, you know, those are things that I don't understand how impressions doesn't even have it. Of course, they've gone through, I don't know how many What's it about five different uh, organizations that have owned them or whatever it's been? I don't even remember. But um, you know, to me, I've been I'm, doing okay as having lots of the old articles on the website, but the new people that own Printware uh, Graphics uh, Graph Expo. Yeah, uh, I, I have to admit, I don't. Audit, they don't have any of the old articles and weren't interested when I pitched them a couple of times. Would you like to do something about that? No. Nope. Mm. Now, you know, I, I have to admit, I went to Graph Expo when it was in Denver. Right. To me, it was like a bust. It was so small. You know, yeah, they had a decent number of people because they had all the different disciplines. But when I went down to the textile thing, it was like, really, this is it? To be honest with you, at Printing United this year, the textile area, Good luck trying to find each, you know, you could find garments. You could find m &R, You could find rock. Uh, I was uh, hanging out in the Vastex booth. Okay. Um, Anatole was there. I do believe, uh, what's his name? Mark Herman's company. I think he was there somewhere. Um. You know, you had GSG, you had Resupply, uh, Grimco, and not much else. 
you know, to me, um, when you go to a show that size, I don't know why they don't follow what Vespa did. I know because Vespa did it. Vespa has their show segmented. Textiles here, graphics here, mm -hmm. digital here. And so if you're in textiles, you want to be in a textile area. Can you go to the others? You can do whatever you want, but you're there for a particular purpose. And you had this hunt to find different booths at this show. Absurd. You know, it, there's no question that the January show is the show. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I know people who are flying in from all over the world for it because it is a screen print show. Vespa is probably worse, worse than printing United now. Digital. They have, they went, you know, Pretty United as well as FESPA and stuff. They all went where the money is. The money is definitely with the digital side. And so that's where they went. And I understand it to some extent, but FESPA is a Federation of European Screen Printing mm -hmm. Associations. Where the hell is the screen print? Yeah. Uh, at least I Pretty United doesn't have screen print in there anymore where SGIA did. So I guess we can't we, we can look at it from that side. I stopped sending little notes to the the new journal editor for Printing United Journal. Uh-huh. Saying, oh, oh gee, nothing in here about screen printing this month. And not getting any responses. And I still approximately once a month I need to look something up and I want to go to SGIA and it isn't there or it's not there correctly. So I sent a little note to Ambrose Crenshaw in Philadelphia saying, oops, can't find that. Now I you still know, have it, but I it's admit, not being broadcast. I have the journal. Ask me if I've even cracked the cover on it. Oh, well. There's nothing in there that, that really is uh, of great interest to me. You know, to thumb through and look at it. Yeah. Um, anyway, the show, if you're curious, I am. If you if you were into DTF, you may have needed another day or two to catch all the DTF machines. I mean, it didn't matter which way you turned; it was DTF everywhere. And uh, I think the interesting thing is, you you know, price points are what from like six seven thousand to about almost fifty thousand. Right. And uh, are, the, are the units that dramatically different? I mean, of course, everybody's got their song and dance that goes along with it. They're, they're definitely getting better. The inks are getting a bit softer, et cetera. And I was talking to someone, I said, you know what? The customer that's buying something with DTF on it could give a shit about the, the hand. They, they, you know, oh, it's on the stiff side. Yeah, but it costs less to go with that guy than with that guy. And I can live with the fact that it's not the softest thing. And so, I mean, I would hate to be with somebody who's selling DTF right now because you better have one smooth song and dance to convince someone to buy the machine. Like selling photocopiers all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean... Uh, what was interesting with stalls, I was talking to Dane, obviously, he and I get to chat quite a bit. And stalls is doing a bang up job on plastisol transfers. And they have gone to town on it, and which I think is kind of funny because uh, they gave up their screen print operation because they couldn't get shit done in there. So that now they're doing uh, plastisol transfers. And they are booming at it. And they're booming at it because they already have that DTF going. And everybody else is going DTF, but nobody else is going plastisol transfer. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny. So who's printing up transfers if they gave up screen printing in Metner? Well, they're doing their own tran their own plastisol transfers. They were they had a facility That's, for doing okay. direct I, I, direct printing. Ah, they, well, that they, was a they long gave time. Up the direct printing. Yeah. Okay. And and so now they just do transfers, uh, you know, for other people. And uh, quite honestly, if I were doing shirts, I'd rather have a transfer, a plastic transfer, than a DTF uh, unit. Only because the hand is, 
that much better. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I mean, like uh, talking to Danny, he said, they just slammed. They're just getting buried with, with all the work. Not that they weren't doing well with DTF because they still do, but uh, they've moved themselves where they have less competition. Not a bad thing to do. Nope. Uh, well, somehow I think with all of the uh, plugs that I put out there for you, I think everybody's still recovering from uh, being at Printing United. The show, you know, in talking to people at the show, uh, Spoke to m and R. I was in the vast text booth, et cetera. Uh, I didn't realize m and R had laid off 25% of their employees. You know, uh, and everybody kind of has that same thing, like about May of this year, everything just went dead. It, it's like someone took a knife and cut it off. Mm. And uh, talking to vast text, yep, same thing. Uh, Pretty much all the way through the line, everybody is experiencing the same thing. And I spoke to some friends over in Europe. They they actually were the ones who said, yeah, May, boom. It's like everything just dropped dead. You finding stuff on your end that's any different or? No, no. I, I mean, that, that seasonal, that seasonal effect of spring. And I'm just trying to think of what might cause it because that's when schools stop. Yeah. Um, uh, well, so you that, know, that makes I'm just trying to think of why May. So schools I, have already, they're packing up to go for the summer already. So there's no. Yeah, summer. but that doesn't make up enough of the industry to, to just chop it. Uh, I was talking to Eric from Action Engineering, and he had gotten in touch with one of his major clients up in Canada. And he said, You know, I haven't seen an order from you in, in like a year. He said, yeah. He said, it just dried up here. Just flat out stopped. And uh, Eric's theory is that all the COVID money that companies received and they were using, uh, bought equipment, et cetera, and they finally tapped out on it. And then they realized, wow, now I have to use my own money. I don't want to use my own money. Oh, And so they just stopped. They had already bought equipment and stuff like that. And so it all went um, to an abrupt halt, which in my, you know, you kind of think of COVID that, wow, well, that ended quite a while back. Yeah, but the money didn't, you know, they had mm. gotten, uh, of course, you and I never got to get any of that money, but <laughs> oh, well. But, you know, a lot of companies did very well on the amount of money they received. And so they did buy quite a bit. And that's why during COVID, our industry was really booming. Aside from just printing masks, they had the money to buy the equipment that they needed to expand if they needed to. Of course, uh, they were also able to get rid of employees that were underperforming. Marginal. Yep. And, um, and here we are now. So employees are still difficult to find which is kind of interesting, I think. I guess you have to go to Springfield, Ohio, or whatever, and hire Haitians. Oh. But um, I don't know. It's just been a very strange year in terms of the ups and downs that we seem to be going through. You're finding, I know, you. how much, how much consulting work were you doing prior to, uh, let's say, now? Well, because of my stroke, I know that took that took me out of the market a little bit, and so I've had some some big European jobs where they wanted me, but otherwise I've only had three or four domestic clients, and that's what I use the trade shows for, trying to drum up basin. Well, uh, the, so do the I. I mean, I know. Yeah, I mean, I I the trade shows are where I pick up my clients other than the occasional that says, hey, I heard about you and uh, I'd like to hire you. Okay, you know, and how often does that happen? It used to happen quite a lot. Yeah, not anymore. It no, used to be busy not at all. When people so, are still learning. Yeah, so doing a trade show is, um, 
the only potential for laying, you know, for uh, getting a new client. Um, and with all the newer people, newer in the last even 10 years, a lot of them don't know who we, who we are. Mm -hmm. um, obviously well, the magazines we, used to be our real marketing because right. we all were in the magazines all the time in the yep. 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Well, that's why when, when Marsha became editor-in-chief of screen printing, she asked if I'd want to write for it. I said, hey, I love writing for the magazines. Uh, and it was kind of funny. She said, well, everything is online. There isn't even a, uh, the only issue that we actually publish is the one for the Printing United show. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I don't care. You know, I just want to get my face out there somehow. Well, and we don't pay, but we can give you an ad space after three or four uh, articles. Yeah, that's okay. The money that a magazine paid didn't add up to a bag of beans anyway. Right. Uh, and, and and getting yourself out there was, it was worth writing an article to have your face out there. It, it used to mean something to be in the magazine. And when the yeah. magazines were the clout, there was no internet to compete with. Right. So that's, um, that's the old men here. Here, let me get my cane out and wave my cane at you kids. <laughs> Listen, I have my cane downstairs because I'm getting prepped for making use for of it. your niece, yeah. Because uh, I'm certain I'm going to be on it for a while. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. As far as consulting, though, the occasional job. If I put a shop together, I get a couple of days out of it. Other than that, sit and twiddle my thumbs. In, in I mean, not specifically, but... You know, uh, trying to market online, I'm just not good at it. You know, uh, social media and I are okay, but not the best of friends. You know, this is my only deal, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a time that it was a lot more exciting than now. You know, I, I, I suppose I should really do this somehow through Facebook other than the fact that I don't know how to do that. My uh, technical abilities have much to be desired. Okay. But um, I don't know. I think I'm just growing older. I I do sense that people have stopped reading and I, I haven't met a person hungry to read anything in a long time. Uh, I haven't either. You know, they, they want you to just put it... I mean, I have to admit, the show, in, the January show and the uh, turnout on the seminars and workshops, insane. Uh, almost to the point of being overboard. Because, like when I do my hands-on workshop, you know, when 119 people show up for a hands-on workshop, there's no chance in hell. You know, mm -hmm. um, will they stop taking on that many? Man, they take on 250 if they showed up other than the fact that uh, the fire marshal may stop it. Right. But- um, We need 10 instructors for that. Yeah. Um, you know, they all want it to be laid out for them, which I understand. I mean, that was part of what we all did. Uh, but now even more so, the idea of reading is kind of an alien thing. You know, I guess we should do those, uh, do, do the voice things, you know, the voice books. Mm. This way you can sit in your car and listen to it. Of course, Chris Rich and I were going to do that 30 years ago. We we're just going to read screen printing magazines again before the internet. Uh -huh. And they said, we won't stop you. So it would have probably been a did. good idea. You know, he had uh, a duplicator. He got a duplicator and we thought that, hey, you know, to make a 60 minute tape of the of the magazine, the magazine. Right, come out, see if that'll work. I suppose you could probably still do that today in terms of uh, putting together a uh, audio. Um, That's what Spotify is. So an audio subscription a podcast. Uh, yeah, well, and not even a podcast, just an audio subscription where um, they can listen to it whenever they want, however they want. They can stop it and continue, kind of like uh, with books. And 
do it on a monthly basis where you do uh, several of the different magazines. Of course, nobody's really interested in screen print anymore. So I think it's kind of funny. Look, when you go over to Asia, which you've been to, yep. uh, much as they have the money to buy uh, hybrid machines, and they do, and DTF, which they do, and and all that, the bulk of the factory is still screen print. You and know, the kind of people uh, that hire us, Charlie, they're huh? not moms and pops starting out. They're conglomerates or you know businesses that have a lot uh, of volume already because they're bringing us over. And yeah. expensive. Uh, you but, know, I mean, some of the factories I've gone to are just crazy in size and, and the amount of work they produce. And is it good? It's real good. I have to admit that quality is not the issue. What it takes for them to put out that quality is ridiculous. You know, uh, three, three screens of white that are all triple yeah. printing. You know, do they really want to become good printers? They don't want to really change anything, but they're willing to hire you to uh, give them ideas and to look like they're moving and uh, progressing. But, you know, are they really mm, not so much that I can see? Oh, well, in any event, how's the rest of your year looking? Are you going to, you're not, are you, you're not doing Fort Worth or anything, are you? No. Nope. Are you speaking in January? No. Nope. I assume you're going to be at the January show. Oh, yes. No question about it. That's a show I don't want to miss. I think that's the one show, no matter what else you do, that you can't afford to exactly. miss. I you didn't know. want to spend $1,000 to go to Printing United. So it was it was the money. I didn't think it was going to be worth it. But I can't take a chance on long days. I got news for you. It wasn't worth it. It really wasn't. Um I mean, I've never missed a show since 77 when I went to my first show. I've never missed a show. Um, I haven't either. Since and, 1980. And, and am I contemplating missing? Next year, it's in Orlando. I don't know. I thought Vegas would definitely um, be a stronger show. Yeah. And it really was <clears throat> for what we're involved with. No, it was a bust. Not only that, cost for the exhibitors. So I was talking to Vastex, uh, and they had their island. And so they contracted for the electrical, which I think they said around 4500 Okay. Then they got another bill for the installation of the electrical for another $15,000. Installation of the electrical? Yeah. Fifteen grand on top of the forty-five hundred. Surprise! Uh, they, they had heard rumors. I forget who it was. Uh, the charge for the carpeting for the use of the carpeting at the show was thirty-five thousand dollars. Wow! For a booth, I I don't know which booth. If you had carpeting, you paid dearly, and it's kind of like, wait a minute. So this is for the electrical service. Yeah, but then you have to be able to use it. And that's where the installation came in. Mm -hmm. and it's, really, you didn't bundle it? No, nah, that's 4,500. That's a different, that's one part. Teachers. And then yeah. this is the part that has to install it. And that was 15 grand. And it's like, I think a lot of the uh, companies that didn't necessarily go booming on this show are going to be very hesitant to... Uh, do it again. Back in two years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like um once bitten. I don't, huh? Once bitten, twice shy. Right. And, and you know, you didn't even know that you didn't have enough to know to ask a question. Because electrical, I you know, in the past, if this is what the electrical is, then that's what it is. Okay, I know what that is. Installation. Oh. You want the carpet, but now you want it installed. Uh-huh. Well, that's additional. So uh, well, I look think... at impressions. They stopped putting carpet in the aisles. Yeah. Yep. Well, in this, what was interesting, they had one food area all the way up front, which is just this massive hall. Mm -hmm. 
all of the food places inside the show? No chairs. No, no sit down areas. No, no area to sit down. I sold it all. Um, even where there was big vacant open areas, no chairs. Gosh, that's where I would meet people. You know, I'd go. I we'd, agree. We'd have a sandwich or a drink, and sit at a table, and work out something. And, and the cost. So, I got there on Monday. I figured, okay, I wanted. I, I got to eat something. So, uh, the S South Hall really didn't have much of anything. So I figured, all right, I'm going to go over to where the center hall is, and because I remember that's where there's food places. So I finally get over there, which took forever anyway. 12 inch hot dog, $10. Iced tea with tax, $7. So iced tea, and a, iced tea and a hot dog, $18. And it's like 18 bucks. I mean, I remember when Nathan's was there, we got hot dogs, had fries, etc. And it was you know, kind of airport uh, right. pricing. This made airport pricing look cheap. Um, decided to have pizza one day. One slice, 10 bucks. Iced tea, $7. With tax, 18 bucks for a slice of pizza and a soda. And it's like, this is ridiculous. I mean, come on. And I'm watching them. So they're getting six slices out of a pie. That pie is 60 bucks. Oh, wait, you want pepperoni on it? It's now $66. You know, like someone said, it, it almost pays to jump in an Uber to go to a decent place and eat something that was really good and come back and find out that you really didn't spend a whole lot more and got something worthwhile, especially after doing shows in Europe where food is fantastic. Yeah. You know, everybody's got food and drinks in their booth. But even if you went to the to the uh, food hall in the Mesa, it was reasonably priced and the food was great. I mean, it was kind of like, wow, I could deal with this. Here, the food was shit and they just charged through the nose on it. Uh, anyway, I think we're off topic, whatever the topic might be. Yes, well, we drifted, we drifted. In any event, I'm not sure if we're going to get anybody to find us today. I I thought for sure you would be the draw. I thought that, you know, I told my people, you know, I put it out on mine. I put um, it out all over the place. but I, uh, I particularly told Scott Fresner that I expected him to show up. He always forgets. Yeah. So I, I've been... I've got it on my calendar. It's every Tuesday... Then I delete them if you're not on because you know, I, uh, you're here or not. I was in touch with Scott uh, the week before the show to see if he's coming to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, just because if he was, I was going to bring cigars. And like that's you what said, he said, that's what he said. What the the only, cigars am I bringing? He said, I'm not going. The only show I go to is the January show. He said, other than that, no reason to go. And you know what? He's probably right as far as, you know, uh, not being a speaker, but just showing up. January show is the bomb. Pick a booth or pick an area, hang out at the uh, Irish pub in the evening, and you'll bump into everybody that you want to bump, bump into. So I'll have to bring cigars for January, that's all. Well, it used to be the Academy meeting was a yep. great evening spent with the rest of the brain trust and talk about screen printing. Not only screen printing, but just the whole academy thing. Nothing. We inducted it th with three people. Um, we even, you know, we even had to ask, uh, what's his name? Are we going to do a photo? And I was like, oh yeah, afterthought. Okay. Marshall was missing. Ray, who had won the... Um, Swarmstead was missing. Uh, I forget who else didn't. What, what, they were around. Mark, but they, Mark Coudre not, was with them. Coudre was with, with them, the, right. He wasn't them. at the meeting either. Totally disjointed. 
you know, that was the one thing I, <clears throat> I regret is the day that Marcy uh, retired. Oh, yeah. She had this under control, not only in this country, but even when I was doing overseas shows and she was going to be there, she'd always organize everything. And um, I mean, Alan's a nice guy and all, but um, it's too digital. And, and not a great organizer, I'm afraid. I, I don't think he goes out there and fights for the Academy the way Marcy did. Okay. Just my opinion, but, you know, you, ne you knew that nothing was ever going to slip past Marcy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she even prepped in advance, yep, going to do dinner, we're going to then go and take a photo, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, that's all gone. You know, last year was really the bust. I mean, you had to pay 50 bucks. There weren't enough people to even take a photo. I don't, we didn't do a photo last year, did we? I seems yeah. to me we did. I think we may have. I can't even remember. It, wasn't it that the guy was up on a stairs and we were down in a pit? I th that could be two years ago. I think that was two years ago. That was the last year that Marcy was there, I think. Uh, the dinner was in a weird, dark area, way off to the side. It was hard to get to. You had to go through areas that were not. Yeah, lit. yeah. That was last year in Atlanta. Where was it the year before that? I'm almost Vegas. Huh? It was in Vegas. Las Vegas. We had to get no. We had to go to the other hotel, the one that was not in the convention center. It was uh, as you went through the parking lot. It was the hotel that was. Uh, I remember exactly. You had to go up, you had to take the elevator up, et cetera. That was two years ago. Okay. Last year that was... That would have been the last of the good ones. Well, yes. maybe not. If that it was. was the... that, no, that was the last of the good ones. It was a full dinner. It was right. uh, the whole deal. Last year was Atlanta, um, where it was, quote, unquote, a buffet for 50 bucks. If there had been something worthwhile on it, it would have been okay. Uh, and this year you got a $20 food coupon. So I actually decided to go for the lobster roll. I had to pay the extra 10 bucks on it, which uh -huh. I had no problem with, but um, you know, was it really good? I mean, I know it's Vegas, you know, you don't. Yeah, but I used roll. to be, Vegas was a food spot. Oh, it is, but not food In the truck. hotels. Yeah, uh, the food, I mean, I'm sure the food trucks had some things that were decent, but I couldn't find anything that just uh, lit up my life, my light. Oh, well. I know that the last time I ate, uh, Marshall had a favorite steak place that he wanted to go, and about four of us went, and that's the that's the only meal I think I had in Vegas that, uh, you know, just wasn't something good just to eat, you know, to go out and talk. Yeah. In fact, that had Glenn Schull. Glenn Schull was there, sat across from me. And so I was supposed to meet Glenn. Yeah, I was supposed to meet Glenn at this show. Of course, that was an unfortunate. Right. Did anybody ever find out what it is that he died of? His his daughter didn't say in the Academy listing that she I, he did respond and say, "Gee, you know, he loved that." And I met a lot of you when I used to come with him. That was her writing to us. Yeah, but I mean, I know. Yeah, you know, they said that he he woke up, he couldn't breathe, and that was the end of it. I don't know if he had a stroke, or if he had a heart attack, or, or what. And and he had no ailments going into it that we know of. Right. I mean, in my case, you know, I I've got this long list, so it's kind of like when I'm gone, the the big the difficulty they're going to have is trying to figure out which one of these things put me down. Well, but, when I had uh, a stroke, I went to bed. I was fine. I woke up in trouble. So, yeah, yeah. If I had known the day before, I would have been surprised. You wouldn't have gone to bed, huh? Well, well I would have done something else. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I I, I met a client at the uh, show, so uh, show was over, and and uh, I wasn't flying out till eight that night. He was flying out even later. He was there with his crew. 
decided, so he decided that we should really go to a steakhouse. We went to uh, the steakhouse at the Aria. Oh. You know, I'm accustomed to seeing a fairly substantial dollar amount for a steak. This thing was incredibly high. I mean, I knew I couldn't have a steak because I had to get out of there fast enough. So I ordered a shrimp cocktail and I ordered a half a dozen oysters. Shrimp Easy. cocktail was $36 for four shrimp. And for these six oysters, it was $32. And I'm thinking, wow. So I was then looking at the steaks. So if you wanted a Wagyu ribeye, that was $195. If you wanted the Wagyu uh, tomahawk, it was market price. Whatever that might be, I, I was figuring it's probably about three fifty. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. Well, I got news for you. At one hundred ninety-five, just for a ribeye, I can't afford it. That's definitely, mm. uh, I mean, even a shrimp cocktail and six oysters for seventy some odd dollars. That's crazy. I mean, they were good, but uh, nine dollars a shrimp in cocktail sauce. I it was one of those good things that uh fortunately I didn't have to pick up the tab. I don't know what the tab was because he was there with two of his other guys. I have no idea what that tab was, but it had to be four digits long by the time they were done. Because uh I mean I can remember the days <laughs> in Vegas way, way, way back when uh when uh you could walk down the strip, get a shrimp cocktail for 99 cents on the strip, get a hot dog for 10 cents, um, and have a difficult time really spending a lot of money. Well, the, the buffets were infamous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And get they were inexpensive. Into the hotels. Yeah, they were inexpensive for what you got. And uh, now... Uh, even the crappy hotel I stayed in, their buffet, so you could have breakfast and dinner for 70 bucks. And I'm thinking, breakfast, I mean, how much are you going to eat for breakfast? I don't care who you are. You're not going to sit there and eat four dozen eggs or anything. Mm -hmm. Pancakes, etc. Buffet for 70 bucks to have breakfast and dinner. I thought that was pretty high for a buffet. And uh, I was staying at the Strat, which used to be the Stratosphere. Oh. Not exact, not exactly. They renovated it. They did a nice job. It's definitely uh, beyond where I stayed there 20 years ago. But it's certainly not one of the premier hotels. I still thought that was quite a bit of money. The only good thing was that the uh, bus to take you to convention center stopped there. So I didn't have to go Ubering it each day. I remember I picked the hotel because it was on the monorail. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I did that for a couple of years. The problem is getting to the monorail. You got to go all the way through the casino, et cetera. And uh, not that it wasn't worthwhile, but it was a, you had to leave 20 minutes earlier just to get to the monorail part. Well, that was and my that, first time, first time walking after a stroke. And then I discovered the Mardi Gras Hotel, uh, the Mardi Gras Motel, so to speak. Yeah. It's only two blocks away. Easy to walk to. Yeah. And uh, That's part of why I took the Strat. I took a look and I said, uh, it's at the north end of the Strip, not that far from it. If I have to Uber it, not a big deal. It would have been like 10 bucks each way, as opposed to being on the Strip, where who knows how long it'll take. Right. I got caught in traffic there on uh, one of the nights. It was like 11, 15. I was going from uh, the uh, Aria area to the Strat. They're doing construction on uh, La you know, Las Vegas Boulevard, 45 minutes. And I'm thinking, glad I didn't take a taxi. <laughs> all you would do is sit there and watch it clicking away I mean, we literally went right. two cars every time the, the light changed. And it was like, 
can't believe I left at 11.15. I didn't get to my hotel till midnight. Midnight. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, Richard, I think we're going to tie it up. What do you think? Wrap it up. Um, I One of the things that I did see, um, PMI came out with a new product uh, similar to that print grip. Oh, the, okay. the, the, the thick pad. Yeah, it there's changes this, color with heat. So there's is thin and there's changes color. So uh, in, in speaking to Andrew, when they were developing this, he said, what temperature do you think is important? And so I was talking to people from Avian and they said, look, a low cure ink, you need to get your palette to 120. And if it's a standard plastisol, you want to be up to about 160-ish. Okay, so I passed that on. So theirs is green, but when it reaches a hundred, when the palette reaches 120, it turns yellow. So that you know you're good. And then now mm -hmm. going to build in a third one where it changes again at 160. And um theirs is thin, so it isn't cushy, which I think is right. really good, which makes more sense to me because that cushy means that you're going to get more ink down than you necessarily want to. Uh, where you do want it, that's great. Where you don't want it, you're too, it's too bad. And theirs seems to work well on everything from cotton to poly cotton, poly uh, and fleece. And they said, yeah, on fleece, probably get about three rounds before you have to do a quick cleaning. Uh, anyway, they sent me some to play with. So that was one of the things that I thought was quite good, quite inventive. Uh, you know, I don't know anyone who's using print grip, to be honest with you. I mean, I chatted with the guy, I had him on uh, Charlie's that Corner. That was new last year. Yes, At the and show. I had him on Charlie's Corner. Uh, I don't know what he charges on his. I know uh, the PMI is $30 a sheet and theoretically is good for six months. And I guess a lot of it has to do with how you clean it, uh, which is always sure. the case. Um, curious to see what it's like. Uh, we use it in the Vastex booth and uh, printed well. You know, uh, of course, at a show, difficult to really get a full feel for what's going on. So I've got someone I'm going to take it over to the to the shop that I work with and have them work with it for a while and see what they have to say. But um, that was my one and only new deal that I saw at the show. Did you see the machine that extrudes finished stencil? Yes, I saw that a year and a half ago at ITMA. It, yeah, but and, they didn't and, bring it to last year's show. We only heard about it and it wasn't at Long Beach. So I heard it was at this show. Yeah, I took some guys over to it. So they're using the exact same image they were. Uh, Exile is the company that's going to be representing right. them here. So here's the problem that I have with that. Exile doesn't know squat about how to print a shirt or anything else. Okay, they are not printers. Right. You know, they they sold uh, their wax system. They sold the Oyo. Okay. Right. The problem that I have is with this system in order for them to really be able to sell it appropriately, they need to number one, have a beta site that really knows how to document, okay? Uh, you know, what mesh are you on? Uh, what kind of detail are you holding? How many print strokes are you getting out of it before your stencil breaks down? They say to reclaim it, you use high pressure washer. Okay. Um, they're telling us that on water-based sink, it held up better than plastisol. That's weird. Okay. Um, yeah. They said the one thing where the edge of the squeegee is, it's breaking down the stencil a bit. So the question is, are, do they have a rounded corner on the squeegee or not? I don't know. What right. hardness the squeegee are they using? I don't know. You know, they, so they get they, four they, inches of free mesh. They they don't have. You know, you have a company that designed and manufactures this. So I think the uh, company that's manufacturing is in either Switzerland or Australia. One of them invented it, the other one is manufacturing. 
neither one of which has any real answers. And now they're giving it over to a company in the U.S. that doesn't have any answers either. And it's kind of like, okay, 70 grand, not the end of the world for that type of situation. The question what is, the is cost? well, so to image a screen, full size image, uh, they say is $3. Okay. Now, if you want to build up a high density screen, which you can, you have to go over it that many more times. So every time you go over, it's another three bucks. So to get a decent high density screen, you're probably 12 to $15 into the stencil. Right. Okay. So how does that compare to the film? Well, you know, I know that the film, uh, 16 by 20 sheet runs roughly 35 bucks. So probably comparable. Uh, Time-wise, takes about three minutes of screen. Okay, no big deal. That's amazing. That's good. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not on, you know, I think that's definitely a positive thing. But they don't have, they don't have those numbers and, and those details that you would like to have if you're going to blow 70 grand, tell me something that I need to know so that I don't screw up a bunch of these. Or to get influencers to say, this is the new hot ticket. I mean, you know, one of the things they did show, and it was impressive. So they had a 110 screen that was holding some incredibly fine detail because the stuff is UV cured as it's outputting. Aye. And so, you know, how well will that hold up? They say it will. I'd like to be the guy who's on press with it to see how well it holds up. Um, you know, tell me what the thickness is of the amount of stencil being laid down so that I have an idea of what my total ink deposit is. Don't have it. I mean, easy enough. Yeah, you, you know, you take a delta scope, you can certainly figure out how, how thick the stencil is. But um, no answers for any questions that you have to have. Yeah, they just don't have, they really don't have any answers. They say they're going to have a company in the uh, Houston area that's going to do the beta for them. They didn't say who it was. And I'm sure that there's certainly somebody in the Houston area that's capable of doing all the proper detailing. I'm just curious to see when they, uh, they're probably going to show it again in. Uh, Long Beach. Worth. Well, definitely Long, Long Beach, Worth. but Fort Worth, just because it's in Texas. Sure. Uh, just curious to see what what kind of progress they've made. So it'll be interesting. In any event, Richard, thank you so much for being on. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. I might catch you again. I think I'm going to ask Andrew to come on on the next one to talk about his new uh, palette. Uh, adhesive. Great. See if, see if that draws anything. In any event, hopefully I'll see you on that one. Okay. And other than that, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Charlie. Hang in there, Richard. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.